Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to model a cock gun in Shaper 3D. In this process video, I will show you how I started with a basic model of a cock cartridge for reference purpose, added simple sketches to define rough proportional forms, then created the basic building block elements so I could use copies of them to explore and develop the design functionality and styling. As you can see as an example here, the handle of prototype version 1 and 2 are quite different actually. Please feel free to download the shared final design so you can follow this demonstration better and explore the design on your own. Great, let's get started. The really big focus or takeaway from this lecture is to show you the process I used and some of the techniques I employed to work very effectively. It's all about working smart and not working hard and making the most out of sketching and direct modeling, which works really well in Shaper. So for that, let's actually hide everything and let's take a look at the sketches first. And I will explain all the individual elements, also the building blocks, and, and then show you how I assembled everything and why I sketched everything. For example, the way how you see it here. So when we rotate around, you can see there are a lot of elements missing. So number one tip here already is we don't have to sketch actually everything. For example, there is everything for the cork cartridge. Obviously, I started with putting down the sketch for this car cartridge because over this cartridge I needed to design everything. So this was the starting point. And this is a revolve object, so I only need logically half of this object to be sketched. Very good. Now, this cartridge has to go into a holder. Okay, so instead of sketching over this half I created, I put everything that relates to the holder right under the cartridge. Because then I can take a look at them next to each other, not over each other. Really nice when I now go to it, you can see I can specify material thicknesses because the cylinder where the cartridge goes in has to be thicker and wider and longer. So it's very easy this way to work very precise. And this is then the way how I started also here again, select, in this case, all three areas, revolve, and there's my cylinder. So on this one, I will move over to here. Very good. And there's the cartridge. Okay, so the cartridge, well, is right into it, the cylinder is not very functional. Now, how do I core this one out? Again, he actually, the way how I set up the sketching worked really well. Take a look at this. So here I go back to the cartridge, but instead of revolving, I just extrude 50% out, move this back, move this up, ta -da! and this I will remove from this. Actually, opposite way. There. Very good. You see, not complicated. Now the cartridge fits in there. There we are. I could actually use the cartridge and remove the cartridge volume from there if I want to. I could also use the shell command, for example. Shell this a little bit as needed however I want. Very good. Now, you notice that actually, if I turn the cartridge on, the cartridge is actually slightly sticking into it. So this is, for example, the material thickness there is a, is a tick too thick. Can we adjust this later? Yeah, we can. So you see, I created a shell and I created a shell, let me completely go back 
So we are there because when I selected this and started shelling, you notice that it can actually based on the way how I shall cut into the piece. So you see this is actually inside. And I want this to be flush. Again, I'm just pointing this out just so you understand how flexible direct modeling actually in Shaper is. So I will shell this till there. The sides are perfectly flush. Very good. So let's take a look. This has a diameter of 50 millimeter. Very nice. What do we have here? 22, that is um, not enough. So 25, there we are. And now it fits perfectly in. Sweet, no? Okay. Now I could put the cartridge in and I need a hole here. Technically speaking, I could drill a hole there so the cartridge actually I can feed in kind of like from this area, but this is not very usable. So we want to create an opening at the front. I created the sketch by simply selecting this face with a finger double tapping. You see, then it moves onto it. And then from the center of my grid, I started sketching everything out. Obviously also you want to have the majority of your snapping tools turned on so you can work with the grid. Makes life really, really easy. So and then here, there, select this area, extrude, cut through, perfect. Our cartridge can be inserted from the top. Very good. Now to save material, to be nice to the environment, maybe also increase our profit a little bit because we use up less material. This area we can, um, dense out actually a little bit, we can remove material. And this is why here you have these rectangles. So when I select these rectangles and extrude them out, let's do the same on the other side there. Okay, now for a first test, that's kind of cool. I can also select this edge, round it, yeah. But it doesn't really look very nice. Uh, what really bothers me here is that this face is horizontal, but I actually want it to look right at this um, axis. So this process didn't really work good. Let me hide this for the moment. Let's go back to this building block folder where all these elements are in there. You see these pieces here. And what I did instead is I selected these two rectangles again, then this axis, and then I revolved this. But instead of doing a 360 revolve, 90 is actually too high. Uh, let's go, let's go down to 70, like there. Very good. We can make those a little bit smaller. We can actually make those a little bit bigger so it's easier to select and it also overbuilds. Very good. And then these edges here, I round as needed. Okay, and you see, because I revolved everything, these faces are now not horizontal. They're actually looking right at um, this axis line. That's what I wanted. Now, because this is a symmetrical object, I don't have to redo this on the other side. I simply make a copy by mirroring this over. And there we are. Cool. And then from this object, these two, I subtract. There we are. Now, if at one point this actually is not really 
correct and I have to adjust it. I can select this face, select this axis and check this out. We just rotate it. How awesome is this? Welcome to direct modeling in Shaper. Also here, material thickness. So if this instead of 20 should be 30 millimeters and just move this and you see everything moves with it, the fillet. We can also adjust the fillet or even delete it and add it again as we want. Very nice. Okay. And as I, as I said, so when we remove this material, um, we made this nice and light, but also less stable. So we need to stiffen up this area. We go back to this sketch folder. There's actually a horizontal stabilizer element. This one here. Very good. So here I can extrude this down two millimeter if I want and four millimeter up. There we are. Pretty nice. I will bring this over. There we are. Hide this one. Let's take a look. Is everything okay? You see, because of how I had this overlaid with the other geometry, the sketch is not perfectly captured in the geometry. So I move this over a little bit, make this a little bit thicker so that um, this edge, I'm gonna go back. Now you can actually see this really nice. You see it hangs over there. There's a tiny gap. So instead of deleting the object and then redoing everything, I just modify the geometry as needed. Cool. Okay. So these two pieces, actually, I will now delete because we are coming actually to the next piece. So when we insert the cartridge, we also want to prevent that the cartridge when we apply pressure might pop out. And take a look at this face. You see how this is nicely rotated or bent. And this is above the 50% mark. So which means, technically speaking, this opening up here is more narrow than the cartridge is wide. But because it's plastic, I can just press the cartridge in and it snaps in place. It's kind of like a, a pressure lock, really smart. So how did I actually model this? Looks complicated, actually pretty easy. And here are, here's the sketch. I need this one for, uh, I show both. Very good. Okay. And then we go to here and we hide this. So the way how I approach this first, and again, this is a really nice, well, another good example of showing you how direct modeling really is very useful, starting something. Uh, and maybe then sometimes it doesn't work out and, th and then you can go back and try a different way out till you figure out a combination of tools and steps that satisfy your geometrical desire. So I thought, well, here, let's bring this one up. It works, but the problem is it actually, it closed the whole area. That is too much. There I will not be able to get the cartridge pressed through. I could actually, if I want, make this not as tall, but then it wouldn't really be as good as the lock. Okay, so selecting a face and then push and pulling offsetting that doesn't really work. That's why I need to extrude this more straight up. Okay, so there it is, extrude. Let's go up 12 millimeters, few tips. First, make a new body. I don't want this to be fused to it. So it is actually a new individual object. Again, I want to work smart. This is a symmetrical design, so I will shorten this. How do I shorten this thing into 50%? Super easy. 
I select one end. So 215, and that is uh, 106.5. There we are. So let's do a quick test. Yep, my math is actually <laughs> not good. That was embarrassing. So let's go back. So 100, oh, 7.5. Okay, there we are. Oh, come on. Yes, perfect. Okay, so the height there is good. Now here, I moved this one back by 15 millimeters to do this really nice. Uh, you can select a face, go to move. You see the arrow. So the arrow is going to the left. That means when I type in minus 15, it goes to the opposite side. And there we are. And I extruded this one up 12 millimeters. This is something I needed to know because you see here, I created this design. So this has a width or a thickness of 2.5 millimeters. Actually, let's go to here, maybe to show this there. So I select this face with a finger and double tap. Then I can go to cut section. So I only see half of this uh, design, the rest is all gone. Then because I double tapped, I'm already in sketch, I could go to offset. This is a circle. So I can select this edge and bring this down 2.5. Very nice. And then I draw a line, the line should be horizontal. And now all I need to make sure is, let's say here, this I lock from here to there, this should be 12. So if I then go into 3D view, there you see I have a new sketch profile I could do something with. And I will show you on the other side. Okay, so they were back. So from there to there, I can do a loft. There we are. The loft here is actually really nice because it blends from this circular shape to this linear shape. But then we kind of get this kind of not so nice looking kink there. It's not a big problem. We join both. And then we can give this a fillet each side. So it's symmetrical, pretty cool. Actually, this should be 22. Yeah, good. Actually, 22.5. So because this is 2.5 and the fillet inside uh, it's always getting smaller. Very good. So now you see there is one quarter. You remember first the beginning we half this one and then try to see if, if it fits. <laughs> there it does. We can join this and then do the same one more time to the other side. You see, super easy. Okay, so this is the way how I built this element. There. And everything in this design is just the unassembled part. These are all just the building blocks. Okay, so let's take a look at the handle. The handle was actually quite interesting to explore because we have an exterior and an interior piece. The exterior piece doesn't move, the interior piece will later move. So we also need to kind of like think about hinge movability. As an industrial designer, I'm primarily responsible for form giving. 
obviously I have to design something that also will work or should work. And then either in collaboration or um, with an engineer or the design so far then will be transferred to the engineer, then they will, for example, take care of adjusting the design and doing all the mechanical internal parts. So that's the reason why in this video, we will focus kind of like where the hinge could be and then we don't go necessarily further. I will hide this part here and just show, I actually started sketching everything for, just so you know, this handle part. So just all these lines I created first because this gave me the ability to block the oval proportion out. And then I actually created all the lines for this part, for the movable part. And then I decided, well, where does, where does the hinge go to? Again, very, very big tip, make use of the grid. It really is extremely, extremely useful because when things line up to the grid, it's very easy to move your lines around, particularly when you work actually on sketches, which are on various planes. Okay, so there's now actually this element. And let's take a look at how did I get to this handle part now it looks actually pretty, pretty impressive. And then this is even nicer. How did I get to there? Okay. So this is where now uh, this copy and paste, this is all nice and good comes in to be really super useful. This is all inside one um, folder. So I select the folder. I do not select an object and make a copy. I select the folder. Then I turn on the plus, move this down, move this up. And there I have a copy of my folder with all the elements inside there. Now, if I want very quickly here, I do my assembly. Okay. And this is all being cut out. Very nice. There you can see how fast actually this process can be. There we are, very good. And all this I will, I will join. Good. Now this I will hide for the moment. I know that this needs to be increased a little bit. And that was it. Very good. Also then here, I will do a mirror there and union. Cool. Okay. So now I just have this part. Okay. For, I don't really need to see this right now. So let's focus mainly on this handle part. So this is actually more or less really done. But now I would like to shell this. So you see, I select all the bases here I would like to remove and be replaced by a shell three millimeter. Very good. Cool. And here, this is actually the outside. So I will start now exploring. Okay. Mm, these edges here we round. I have an, a hunch if we round this. Okay, this will this will work out. Very good. When this should rotate later, let's make this nice and round to 40. And here 
we shell it this way. Also three millimeters. Okay, pretty good. Nice. So when I put this one to there, I could as a quick demo, go ahead, make myself here, this copy there. No, this looks, this looks good. Select this one, mirror along this face there. Cool. Okay. And I will actually now get in con um, notice one technical problem because let's turn on this axis. So this axis I created um, based on a cylinder that is, or that was coming right here from this circle. That's this axis describes the rotation. So I can select this and this, go to the front, turn cut section on if I want to. And then the widget, I move onto this axis. Pretty cool. And now I can rotate it. And here you can see what happens. It intersects. Hmm. So that doesn't, does not look very good. That does not work very good. So what, what options do I have to solve this? This is now where our creativity can come in. Well, when I move this one to there, okay, this happens. And when I move this one over and this happens, ah, okay. That worked to, to a certain degree actually. So I shortened the whole part. So I select this one, back to here. And when I rotate this now, okay, actually, yeah, this, this can work. The only problem is when this is spring loaded, the spring would basically push this one back. So I might want to have somewhere here, a small trigger element that stops it. So all nice try out, but this shelling actually of this object turned out to be rather problematic. The outside shell is actually good, but not this inside shell here. So let's come back to the stage. I will turn on my axis so I, I also can see it. And now I need to figure out, hmm, what can I do here? This, let's make this a little bit smaller. So I have a bigger face there. Very good. I will turn on my sketches and you see here, that's a tiny interesting rectangle. So on this rectangle, I extrude, bring it to there. And we will go back right to why I said work with the grid. Zup, 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 zup. It perfectly lines up. Okay, so with this rectangle, I can do actually the following. Bring this one up. I model this over hidewise. Then I bring this over. Very good. And then from this, I would like this cube to be removed. And look at that. Now I have a small little, how could I say that? Kind of like a teeth or so. This maybe we move three millimeters forward based on how much we only maybe need. And I don't know if this is actually now way too far. So let's see. Select it, move this to there and rotate it. Ah can actually be maybe a millimeter further. So let's make this clean, 58 millimeters. Okay, oh, for example, that, that can work really, really well. So then you can rot this, rotate, so not rotate, round this again, I will do it till here. Very good. Hide actually all the sketches. Then I could select all these edges again and shell this. There we are. 
I forgot this edge on purpose just to show you. I can do it afterwards there. Very nice. So for example, this is the way how I initially first developed this design. And then I went actually to this design. Because I wanted to have a more rounded part. Also here, this detail is different. This detail is different. It's less boxy. This is this will work, but uh, it's not as nice. So let's go back. So I will actually go to here. I will delete this on purpose. Let's say I made a mistake. Just to show you, okay. Copy up, copy down. And then I go to here and bring this copy in there. So maybe I messed up one part and I simply brought back my other object. Okay, so now I can very easily restart. And so this was, for example, nicely rounded. This was also nicely rounded. There, there, there. Very nice. And this actually here I will I think keep nice and straight. This has to be bigger. There we are. Cool. Okay. Same um, same process here one more time to try to cut actually this detail. There. Bring this a tick back. Then can bring this up. Bring this up. And then from this, we remove this one. Okay, I'm just doing a quick eyeballing so I know where I had these elements there. So I'm matching this. Cool. Now, you notice that this edge here, I'm not actually rounding because now I can very nicely round this as much as I want. So this is 11, why 11? Well, this edge is actually 11. So when I round this by 11, and later I put another shell onto it, I have actually 50%. So let me quickly finish this. There we are. Very good. Okay, let's hide the sketch. Redo this one more time. And three millimeters. Very good. Go to 40. Very nice. Okay. I'm still working only on each half. And at this point now, I will turn the sketch back on because I want to. I would like to show you something. So we need to create some sort of a mechanism. So here, let me just cut a hole. So something will be pushed through a metal pin, something like this. And here, I will extrude this. You also see it snaps actually in full uh, millimeter increments. So now 40 millimeters actually it went through. I will do the following. I will go with new and then continue pushing this out by four millimeters. Okay. Just a little tip. And then this, I move a little bit to the or inside the object. It's fine because now I can select these two. Union, join them together. Cool. So for this one now, I kind of like need to do something 
similar. So now this is the piece that runs. There is the hole. Very good. And then here, on this starts cutting, it should join. There we are. Okay. Let's hide the sketch and do our mirror parts. There we are. And mirror here. Does this, oops, that was the wrong one. There. So this all looks actually pretty, pretty decent. Very good. Now we can see if there are a metal pin or something would be pushed through. This would work really well. This is a much nicer handle actually to hold. So I could join these two together if I want. I don't necessarily need to, so I'm just keeping it right now. In this case here, for the last demo in this tutorial, I will join these two together because this is not wide enough. If I make this one wider, you see the fillet actually on top also adjusts. Plus, while I have this rounded, this opening is here for my fingers, so majority of my hand would actually be more here. So I have actually, when I turn this one on, there's actually a little sketch. I drew the sketch flat on the grid, and then I simply moved this one down. And I will extrude this one there. And then this I will move into this folder I was working in. There we are. Okay, good. So on the top, you can see it, it sits actually inside the body. This not necessarily. So I have to adjust everything just a little bit. No, I have internal edges, which are hard to see. So a little tip, go to here and turn show hidden edges. Now I can round this one till it sinks into the body. Very good. Thickness here is seven. Oop. So let's round this one. I use 10, 10, okay. Three. Yeah, four looks better. And then these two I can round two. So there you can see now this is kind of like a um, kind of like a guide. So my wrist actually can or my index finger and my thumb would actually be right under the surface. So let's union these two parts together. And because I did this, actually this fillet is now disconnected. You see this? And this allows me the following. The material thickness is three. So we make this one bigger. So eight and eight. Okay. And then we can go 11. That's eight plus three. There, can make this actually nice and round. Maybe let's go to 10. So two more. And we adjusted the lower part of the handle so that in terms of ergonomic experience or touch, it is much, much nicer. And the upper part remains actually nice and rectangular, easy to put all the mechanical elements in. 
nice consistency bonus is also this is nearly circular round now well, this is basically circular round so nice and consistent cool here i see this got slightly off so i have to adjust the fillet as needed very good and to add a little bit of more material there in between one easy way is i select this top face with finger double tap and i simply draw somewhere two lines ideally again <laughs> along the grid as always you see there's already one uh, sketch in place and then when i go into a 3d view I can select these three fragments. That's the reason why I drew this, these two lines actually over the edges, not onto the edges. And then I'm just guessing maybe 20 millimeters down. Maybe 42 there. And then all this will be joined together. Cool. Yeah. And then the last step, let's make it nice and pretty. 79. Let's do the same here. You can make this nice and flush so it doesn't look so angular. This is very sharp. COM always selecting pairs of edges there and the the last detail maybe to show is here how do i solve this problem when i would like to round this one I can round it but you see how i get this detail hmm. not good the solution to this problem is actually super easy we just need to create a shape, then we cut through it. So let's go back to our sketches and look, there it is. So take a look from the site. I will turn this on. So you can see where actually the sketch is. The arc right stops at the top edge. Again, that's the reason why I work with the grid so much. It helps me really to align everything easily so we select the sketch filling cut this through yeah this works really good okay then let's do it this way and bring this over very nice now make a copy Rotate it. Bring this over. Again, because it's all on the grid, this snaps perfect. And then from this, these two. Subtract. Very good. So we have actually now this done uh, we have these fragments here oh what do we do easy select this face and we extrude the face till it goes to its other side and this way we clean it up yeah and then if these fillets are not good we can always adjust the size later and this is basically now reaching the end showing you the journey how i started by blocking out a basic uh, cock cartridge and then created all the sketches the building blocks and then with copies from these elements created my prototype design one and prototype design two